So we want to generate a spirogram to illustrate lung and breathing volumes. So here we have the volume of air in the lungs. 0, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6 litres of air. Now this green line is representing the situation when the chest is at rest. When we are not making an effort to breathe in, increasing lung volumes, and we're, when we're not making an effort to breathe out, decreasing lung volumes. So that is a state of relative muscular rest. And as we know, breathing in is an active activity and involves muscular activity. We breathe in and we breathe out. We breathe in and we breathe out. And we see the exchange here is about 500 mils of air. And this is what we call tidal volume. So at rest, we're breathing in, we're breathing out round about 500 mils per inspiration and expiration. And this is the tidal volume inspiration here, at the top of that curve. And that's the tidal volume expiration there at the bottom of that curve. So about 500 mils of air going in and out with each ventilatory effort just there. But then I decide I'd like to breathe in as much as I can. So I breathe in as much as I possibly can. In, more, 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 keep going all the way in as much as you possibly can. And in men, we should get to a figure of about six litres in average size men. Now, obviously, these figures are going to be smaller in women and in small adults and children proportionately less. And we will give some figures for males and females. So what we've done here is we've gone from where we normally stop breathing in to when we can't possibly breathe in anymore. So we've gone from where we normally stop breathing in, which is that figure there, that level there, to all we can possibly breathe in, which is up there. So that gives us a capacity there, like that, from there to there. From when we normally stop breathing in to all we can possibly breathe in. And that figure is called the inspiratory reserve volume, the IRV, the inspiratory reserve volume. And in men, that's about 3,100 mils. And in women, that's about 1,900 mils. So 3.1 litres in men, about 1.9 litres in women. And after that effort, I'm just going to have a little rest and breathe normal back to normal tidal ventilation there. But after I've done that for a while, I decide I'm going to breathe out as much as I possibly can. So I start breathing out. Uh, keep going, keep going, keep going, keep going. And I breathe out as much as I possibly can. And then I stop and I go back to normal breathing again. Now that figure there, from where I normally stop breathing out, just there, to the maximum I can ever breathe out, is going to be that line from there to there. And that is called the expiratory reserve volume. It's the functional reserve of the lung, the expiratory reserve volume. And in men, that's going to be about 1200 mils. And in women, that's going to be about 700 mils of air, the expiratory reserve volume. And what I can do actually is I can take the maximum I can ever breathe in and the maximum I can ever breathe out. So that would take us from the maximum we could ever breathe out is going to be there around about 1300 mils of overall volume and the maximum I can breathe in there, the inspiratory reserve volume. So we could take a figure from there to there. From the most we can ever breathe in to the most we can ever breathe out. And that figure there is referred to as the vital capacity, the vital capacity. So the vital capacity is made up of the inspiratory reserve volume 
plus the tidal volume plus the expiratory reserve volume. So if the inspiratory reserve volume is about 3,100 mils, the tidal volume is 500 mils, and the expiratory reserve volume is 1,200 mils, that would give us 4,800 mils of vital capacity in a man. In women it's going to be less. There's another figure here from where I normally stop breathing out to the maximum I can possibly breathe in. So from where I normally stop breathing out to the most I can ever breathe in. And that figure there is called the inspiratory capacity. And that's the inspiratory reserve volume plus the tidal volume. So that's going to be about 3,600 mils in men and 2,400 mils in women. And we notice that there's a bit here that we can never breathe out. Can't breathe that bit out there. No matter how hard we try, there's always going to be what is called a residual volume. So that part there from where we maximally breathe out to the z theoretical zero figure in the lung, that's going to be the residual volume. And that's about 1200 mils in men and about 1100 mils in women. And there's two reasons for this. One is that some of the airways, the conducting airways in the lung are non-collapsible, they're lined with cartilage. So there's always going to be some air left in. And the other is that there's a pressure around about the lungs called the transpulmonary pressure. And this is the difference between the pressure in the alveoli and the pressure in the pleural membranes round about. And of course the pleural membranes are at a negative pressure so they're sucking the lungs open. So the lungs, so breathing out, you can't overcome all of that negative pressure. So there's going to be a limit. But if, if you have a thoracotomy, if, if someone has a penetrating chest injury, then that uh, differential pressure is going to be uh, reduced and the pressure around about in the pleural cavity is going to go down to atmospheric pressure. So that means there's less suction holding the lungs open. And in that case, the pressure there can go further down and the lungs will... Um, the lungs will collapse down further, causing a collapsed lung. And this total capacity here, we could uh, draw the line, I suppose, for, from there to there. It's a bit of a theoretical figure. But that whole six litre figure there in men, 4,200 mils in women, that is the total lung capacity. So we see these different volumes. We have the inspiratory reserve, 3,100 in men, 1,900 in women. We have the vital capacity, about 4,800 in men and about 3,100 in women. We have the expiratory reserve volume, 1,200 in men, 700 in women. The inspirational capacity, 3,600 mils in men, 2,400 in women. The residual volume, 1,200 in men, 1,100 in women. And this total lung capacity, 6,000 mils, 6 litres in men and 4.2 litres in women. Now, as well as these figures, it's interesting to think about ventilation over time. So we have something called the minute ventilation, the amount of air going in and out of the lungs per minute. And this is going to be equal to the tidal volume, the tidal volume multiplied by the respiratory rate. And the tidal volume, as we know, at rest is going to be about 500 mils times the respiratory rate at rest, say about 12 breaths per minute. So that's going to give us around about six litres of air going in and out of the lungs per minute. 
the minute ventilation. But of course, as you know, there's two types of uh, airways in the lung. There's the conducting airways, the bronchial tree, and there's the actual respiratory zones of the lung. And the respiratory zones of the lung consist of the respiratory bronchioles, the alveolar ducts leading into the alveolar air spaces. The alveolar air sacs. So all of these little cavities are alveoli, but these are the alveolar air sacs. So here we have the respiratory bronchiole, the first place that it's thin enough for gaseous exchange to take place. The alveolar ducts leading to the alveolar air sacs in the respiratory zone. So the respiratory zone of the lung is only this, it's the respiratory bronchioles, the alveolar ducts and the alveoli. All the rest of it is are conducting airways. So air is going to be stuck in the conducting airways that never gets as far as the respiratory surfaces. So about 150 mils of air is going to be what we call dead space essentially. This is going to be air in the nose, the pharynx, the trachea, the bronchi, the bronchioles and even the terminal bronchioles which are still too thick to allow gaseous exchange. Whereas uh, 350 mils is going to get through to the respiratory uh, zones of the lung. So we could actually do a, a, a separate uh, calculation here about the air getting through to the respiratory zones. So about 350 mils of air getting through to the respiratory zones times 12 breaths per minute is going to equal 4,200 mils of air per minute actually getting down to refresh the respiratory zones of the lung taking in the fresh oxygen taking out the carbon dioxide to be expired.